Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, beautiful people. Peter here again. Today, we're going to quickly go into another topic by creating a user mailbox in Microsoft Exchange 2019 using PowerShell. Now that you're getting familiar with the Exchange environment, so once you have access to your server, you click on Start, and you're going to bring up the Exchange Management Shell. So the code or the command that I'm going to use for this, I'm going to put it in the video description. But since you also want to, you might not be in front of your computer right now, but the idea is for you to practice when you are in front of your server or maybe you have access to your server. So we're going to play with a little bit of PowerShell command. So we're going to do new mailbox. So you can click on shift to auto complete them. We're going to call the name parameter. We're going to say, okay, in this case, let's do John door. So next we're calling the alias. I do a little bit of explanation of this in my last video. So I will do J do. Then we are going to call the user principal name. I'm using the shift tab key just to auto complete that. Then I'm going to bring the email, which is John. Let me just do John dot door at. Please remember that this is going to be your own uh, fully qualified domain name. So when we are doing um, PowerShell, we are creating user mailbox via the PowerShell. We have always to specify the database. If you do it via the GUI, automatically is done for you. So I've actually checked my database and how do I do that? I need to log into my management center. So let me see. I can auto complete this just to show you where you can find your database name. I'm always having issue with my with my password. Sure. So uh with that being said, uh, this one is going to log in right now. I will go to server and I'm going to go to database. This is my database I wanted to put it to. I have a lot of them because I've actually used them to practice. So I'll go back to my management shell, I'll just a DB02. So I will make sure that I'm always have it in parentheses. And I'm not sure why that is coming through. Okay. <laughs> That's because I've actually put it in a different place. Okay. There you go. So the idea is just for you to practice. Now I'm going to set the organization unit. Okay. This is where I was actually doing this earlier and I actually make a mistake because I'm not getting it right. So in the organization unit, what actually happened, let me go back to my domain controller. Okay. I'm going to make it bigger for you. Is that when you have organization unit, these actually come first before this. So the last time that I'm actually practicing it, I'm getting error because I'm putting this force. So this actually have to come first before that. So let's go back to our, so I'm going to do OU equals, what did I mention? London, because London is the child one. Then after that, I will put office, just in case you are getting, um, some error message right there. So offices, then I'm going to specify where it, where is it located in the DC, well, buffer. Then I'm also going to do the fully qualified domain, which is a uh, .com. So you might be asking, oh, Peter, where do you get this information from? Do we need just a case that we don't know this offhand and stuff like that? Actually, you can always come back to your DC, go to where you wanted to create the user, right click on it, go to properties, but you're not going to see it that way because you need to actually be in advanced future. So once I go to the office, I go to London, right click on it, properties, 
then I go to the attribute. So in the distinguished name, that is where you want it to go. You can always just copy that and put it in the PowerShell. So that will make your job really fast. So once I finish with the organization unit, I'm going to put enter. It's going to ask me for the password that I wanted to use for the user. Enter. And we're supposed to have the user created right now if there's no mistake. There you go. So if I go back to my DC and I just refresh, I should see that user in my London organization unit, John Doe. If I go back to Exchange, I should see that user from the recipient mailbox and I just refresh, John Doe is actually here. So I can guarantee you that John Doe actually have an email right now. How do we know? We can go here, we can call our mailbox. Once we call our mailbox, then we will do John. We actually need to make sure that we are doing the username. So you see the alias that I mentioned earlier. I mean, we can do login, but now in the mailbox, the alias is the one that we're going to use. Let me see if I can find it. I'm just trying to see. Ready. We're going to talk about all of this then later in the future. I can actually use john.do to log on, and I'm going to prove that with you right now. So I can do john.do at worldwalker.com. Hopefully, I don't mistype my password right now. Okay, it looks like my password works. So this is actually the logon domain. It's different from aliens. So if you have any question regarding that, please kind of put it in the comment section. So now that is it. We just have a fresh new email, uh, user mailbox that we actually create with PowerShell. With that being said, uh, if you find this video valuable, please share. Thank you so much for your support every time. Uh, if you are new here, subscribe, and I will see you in my next video. Thank you. Bye-bye for now.